Hey guys, what's up? By uh, Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And this one, I'm kind of giving my thoughts on the update. I want to take a step back. I've made two videos on it, just kind of tutorial type videos. But now I just want to have a place to give my opinion on it because there's been a lot of division within the Clash of Clans community. And some people like the update, some people absolutely do not. So I want to kind of give my thoughts on some of the concerns, some of the goods and bads, at least in my point of view, uh, of this update and try to address all of that in this video, as well as the future of what this new game mode could bring. With friendly challenges, I have some information I can share with you guys about that that I'll talk about as well. So um, just to start here, I think it's important to kind of address what happened in terms of how the update came out because this one was not like a lot of updates. There was a lot of hype and a lot of waiting. And the way I see it, there's kind of two main factors that worked against the update in terms of building the expectations very, very high. And whenever expectations are really high, it's difficult to deliver. Even if it is, you know, a cool update, which uh, you guys can judge for yourself, even if it is something that's kind of cool, the expectations were so high that anything compared to what it was built up to be um, was likely to fall short. So basically starting back when the news of an update reached the community and the boat was added to the game, the broken boat, um, YouTubers, streamers, just a lot of media outlets, not trying to blame anyone in particular because um, it's just what will happen. Um, it's just how it works in YouTube. Uh, people started making videos about the boat and there wasn't much to say and that's why I, I didn't make any videos because I honestly thought that what else can you say besides it's a boat um, and it's not going to be heroes level 500. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you liked the video. There was not much to say about the boat. Um, Supercell you know, didn't want us to release any information so there wasn't much to cover but a ton of videos were being made so there was kind of a a lot of coverage but an absence of content and that was just serving to build the hype even further because people were speculating there's possible leaks people are wondering what's going on and that just was kind of a cycle of it getting more and more hyped now in addition to that another t thing that was working um towards the hype was the timeline and the update was told it was kind of, people were told it was coming I think a few weeks before it came uh, longer than usual and with the absence of sneak peeks it felt like a very long time before the update came out now Supercell um, as I know was tweaking things they were trying to make adjustments all the way up to when the update come out came out because they wanted to make sure it was as balanced as possible so um, that's part of it they just had to get everything perfected but um, I think having that huge uh, time gap, the multiple weeks, also serve to build the hype and to get those expectations even higher. If it had been, you know, one week of captain's logs followed by the update the next week, I think it would have been better received, not because it would have been any different, but because um, people would not have been waiting for so long and expecting so much. Um, I don't think it did uh, much of a service for a lot of uh, people to be saying it's such a huge update, it's massive, all this stuff. Um, not Again, not trying to blame anyone in particular. Um, it's nothing personal. It's just what happens um, with YouTube and with how people portray uh, the update and changes to the game when they're trying to uh, to make their videos attractive, stuff like that. So it, it is what it is. But in the end, I think both those things um, serve to make the expectations greater than the actual um, delivery. So that being said, let me just address the game mode, talk about it um, specifically now. So overall, I enjoy the new Builder Hall game mode. I think it's pretty fun and it's kind of reminiscent of way back when, when uh, we used to you know, progress through the game through Builder Hall or through Town Hall 4, 5, 6, um, back when kind of we were discovering the game before Clan Wars for me. Um, and it's each building matters, each troop matters, each defense placement matters. The small scale is fun and it kind of has that nostalgic feel to it, which I enjoy and I it has a strategic element. I've gotten to play Builder Hall uh, 4 and 5 and uh, the balance is good and I think it's very interesting, the 1v1 player setup. 
um, definitely makes it even more interesting because you have to have um, a good base and a good attack and you can see if you have what it takes in real time. There's not a delay like there is in Clan Wars. It's much more instant. Um, and I think some of the other things are cleaned up that just made the original village just kind of messy in terms of the loot system and how big everything gets. It kind of cleaned that up and made it more simple, which I enjoy. The problem for, for me and for a lot of people just looking at the comments of videos and stuff is that it comes in the face of a passionate player base who, at least for my part of the community, is interested in war and who has spent timeless hours, if that's even a thing, uh, who spent a lot of time on their base and who want to see what they've already invested in be improved. So independently, I think it's a cool game mode. Um, people, you know, some people say, oh, it's Clash Royale, stuff like that. But I, I honestly think, and I think probably a lot of other people would agree in some sense that it is a fun game mode. Um, if, if you don't think so, I'd say wait till Builder Hall 4 or 5. It's a lot of fun. There's some flaws in how you upgrade, which I'll talk about in a moment. But I think it's a fun uh, game mode. The problem, like I said, is people want balancing changes to clan wars. People want more game modes within Clash of Clans that actually involve your base. They want to be able to better enjoy what they've already invested in through um, new features and more balance, a better system of how to use what they already have. And I completely understand that and I agree to a certain extent. Um, this update is not that, and not every update's gonna be that, and I think people have to understand that, but the, like I said, the expectation that was built up, coupled with people's desire for new stuff to use what they already have, to have balance in clan wars, that just kind of, um, threw this new game mode, which independent of everything else I think is very cool, it threw it under the bus because we, there's so much else going on, um, in the war community with uh, the problem with engineered bases. Um, there's some frustrations with like CWL, um, with balance, Town Hall 10 being a little bit too hard, Town Hall 9 being a little bit too easy maybe, and uh, Town Hall 11 just being how Town Hall 11 is. Um, there's the frustration already there. So I think people just seeing this that's completely independent with besides the gear ups, which um, we'll kind of have to address in a later video. That actually should be somewhat interesting. But besides the gear ups, it really doesn't impact your main village. And I think that's a huge challenge for a lot of players. The two main concerns I've seen though are first, the loot system, the upgrading system. And second, the, um, the disconnect between the two villages you now have per account. I think the first one's pretty easy to solve. I think Supercell, especially after an update, is going to listen to the community and I think they'll definitely consider um, the, the suggestions they get, which has been overwhelming. Um, change the loot system. Uh, it shouldn't be capped. It needs to some, have some ability to have perpetual uh, loot you can get each day, like in the regular village, if you're willing to put in the time. And I agree with that. I think that'd be a cool feature, and I hope that Supercell um, does make some modifications to the loot system. It shouldn't be that big of a deal to change. Um, the second one is a little bit more difficult. It's the disconnect. And with the gear ups, we'll see how that impacts things. But um, people don't want to, you know, start from the beginning, have to grind it out in many cases. I don't personally mind, but I understand people not wanting to do that. And um, all I can say is really the, the balancing changes, hopefully another update, you know. I'd say have some patience. Um, this one got hyped up, which it makes it disappointing that it doesn't quite um, do some of the balancing changes. It did have some changes um, with the loons and with the heal spell, the, um, uh, what else was there, a clone spell change. There were a few changes, but not the big ones to address like engineered bases, um, to really give Town Hall 10 more balance and to address some of the bigger problems that uh, people see in the clan war community. And I think that um, all we can do is continue to voice our opinion. I'm going to do my best to kind of try to um, represent the clan war community and try to push what we think should be added. But this isn't the update for that for the most part. It's a new game mode, which unfortunately is kind of being overshadowed by uh, different 
complaints and uh, issues people have uh, with how the current game is and how it might have stagnated um, in some people's eyes. So um, it is unfortunate. There's not a whole lot they can do to kind of integrate the two villages. It is something that if you want to, you know, play the Builder Hall game mode, it is going to be a little bit of a grind. It's not that hard, though. It's only five Builder Hall levels. Um, and I think people would have rather seen a 1v1 within the regular village um, than within a totally new game mode, which I understand. But at the end of the day, I think it's cool to have new defenses, new troops. There are a slight change, but um, still a reminiscent of the early days of Clash of Clans for many of us. In terms of the future of this, I think friendly challenges are um, something that would be very, very cool to see in the game. Ways that you can play people other than just random people in the search, play clan mates, possibly have little mini tournaments. If you have friendly challenges, then the community itself can set up mini tournaments um, if they can manage that. So um, there's a whole lot of opportunities for this game mode to be much more competitive. And um, I guess I think you guys will see once you get to Builder Hall 4 and 5, it will become competitive. Now, I had the opportunity to, um, to be in a group talking to one of the developers and uh, we were talking about, okay, what can we say in terms of friendly challenges? And he said it's safe to tell people that friendly challenges are something they are considering and that they, um, they're definitely thinking about implementing. There's no timeline, but um, the direction they seem to um, express to us that they want to go with this is to continue to make it something you can do with your friends and to make it um, more competitive and stuff like that. So... Um, I think it's going to go in the positive direction. Um, people's concerns are all valid, but like I said, um, I don't think they should be directed too much at the game mode. It's more the circumstances in which it came out. Um, so go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments below. I look forward to seeing that. I'll do my best to kind of respond, keep the discussion going. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll be covering the usual uh, main village clan wars and possibly a little bit of uh, the Builder Hall game mode depending on how it goes. I want to include some strategic videos because it is very strategic. So thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bisectatron out.